Hi team, my name's Shasta. I'm a presenter with Young Tassie Scientists. So I'd like to pay my respects to the Palawa custodians of Lutruwita, that's Tasmania, the place where I was born, where I grew up, and where I study. Now, I study entomology, ecology, and biogeography. Entomology is insects. Ecology is how two different groups of living things interact with one another. And biogeography is how living things interact with unliving things in an ecosystem. So I might study something like how soil and rainfall influence certain plants to grow, and those plants attract specific insect pollinators. And then I come along and count them, because we, people, are part of the living part of an ecosystem. And I sure do love insects. But I've found that different cultures find different things normal, and my culture, I'm a white Australian, doesn't love insects so much. Most people find them pretty creepy and crawly. It's actually why I wanted to be a science communicator, to tell people cool things about insects in the hope that they'd start to think that they're cool the way that I do. So when I discovered that there was an Aboriginal Dreamtime story about giant sacred caterpillars, I was really excited. So I'd like to extend my thanks and my acknowledgement to the Aranda people of Mpantwe. I've really fallen in love with their caterpillar Dreamtime story, and I wanted to share part of it with you today. I've learned about it in the same way that I learn about insects, by reading, looking, listening, and comparing. This is Yeparenya. Nchalka and Utneringacha, and they are hawk moth caterpillars from Mbantwa, that's Alice Springs in the Northern Territory. Now they can look very similar, but careful observation shows that they are each a different species. This is reflected both in their Latin scientific names and in their Aranda Aboriginal names. Utneringacha, for instance, feeds mostly on the Utneringa, the emu bush. So in English, we call it the emu bush caterpillar, while Yeparenya feeds on the ayepa, the tarvine plant, and arenya means belonging to. Ayepa, arenya, belongs to the tarvine plant. So these aranda names are recognizing that ecological relationship between the caterpillar and its host plant. Now, I've heard a traditional owner say how Yeparenya were inspiration for Aboriginal dot paintings, and I can see what she means. All of these beautiful patterns and colours, but while dot paintings are really eye-catching to us, Yeparenya is actually wearing camouflage. All of these spots and stripes and colours make it hard for a bird to see a caterpillar shape all they can see is patterns. But being eaten by a bird isn't the only trouble that a yeparenya might face because Aranda people eat yeparenya as well. In fact, current food science is really interested in how nutritious insects are for people to eat. They're full of protein, iron, vitamins, all that good stuff. But most non-colonial cultures around the world already know that. They understand how healthy and tasty insects are, and so it is normal to eat some of the local insects along with the other vegetable and animal foods. I've eaten a deep fried cricket before. Have you? And still, being eaten by people isn't the biggest challenge that a yeparenya might face. As the Dreamtime story says, the giant sacred caterpillars came up out of the ground, just like the real ones do, and they moved across the land, coming from north, south, east, and west. And as they moved, they shaped the land with their campsites, with their dancing, and their cocoon sites. They finally gathered at Mpantwa, where they met with other Yeparenya caterpillars. But there was a fight not between the caterpillars, but between Ilperenia, their giant green beetle enemies. These green stinky beetles used their jaws to snip off the heads of the sacred caterpillars, and where their bodies fell, 
mountains have formed. And the gaps that you can see in the mountains, the McDonnell Ranges around Alice Springs, those are where the caterpillar heads were missing. Now, this story captures two things. The ecological relationship between the green carob beetle, which is still a hunter of caterpillars today, but also the unique caterpillar shape of the mountains. And that sounds very biogeographical to me. You might see a green carob beetle one day because they live all across Australia, including Tasmania. I don't know if they'd be called Il Perenia, so far from the caterpillar dreaming, but you could ask if they have a name in one of the Aboriginal languages where you live. So people will sometimes ask me, what's the biggest insect that I know of? Sometimes I'll tell them about the Goliath beetle. It's a beetle the size of a mouse that would fill up your hand. And sometimes I tell them about Yeperenya, Nchalka and Utnerengacha, caterpillars the size of a mountain.